on, let's get that good. The great God of him. How many know he's good? I heard somebody say he's good all the time. All the time. God is good. Come on, let's get a Lord a hand. Thank the Lord, amen, for allowing me to be here today. Thank God for my brothers and my sisters. Hey, thank God for our leaders. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you now. God, for just count us worthy to be in your presence again. God, you didn't have to do it, but you did. For that, I say thank you. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Tell him thank you. For allowing you to be in the land of the living. Thank you, Lord. Now, God, we come now with an open heart. Oh, God, and listening ears to see what you're saying, your spirit is saying to the church. God, you reminded us this morning that it's worth the fight. And now, God, we want to hear from you. Oh, in the name of Jesus. You know all. Nothing is hid from you. We ask you now, God, to give us a rhyme of word right now in the name of Jesus. Use this vessel, oh God. May it decrease and you increase. Lord, be pleased with our worship. Be pleased with our lives. Be pleased with our witnesses in your name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. You can be seated in the presence of God. Ah. I heard somebody say, is there a word from the Lord today? There's another word. Another word. Come on, give my hand. I think we kind of take that for granted, take that kind of lightly when God gives us a word. I say that sometimes we take that kind of lightly when God gives us a word. That means you're still here. That means you're still living. Come on, tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. First, I want to give glory and honor to God. Amen. To my pastor, amen. Dr. Odell Riley and his wife, Dr. LaFrieda Riley. Amen. To our mother district missionary, Diane Jordan. Amen. Bless you, Mother Joy. Amen. To all the elders, amen, and their wives. Amen. To all the ministers and their wives. To all the deacons and their wives. God bless you. Amen. To, amen, the missionaries, the ones that are married, their husbands. Mm -hmm. To the aspiring missionaries. To all of my brothers and my sisters and to the children. I want to give glory now. Let's get the children right here. And to my own heart. Amen. Mother Sheila Price. I'm asking y'all to pray for me today. Because Pastor, I tell you, I was listening to your word and message. And I said, well, Pastor, going to preach my message too. But we didn't talk about it. We didn't call each other. We didn't text each other about our messages, but they line up. They line up. How many know God know what you need? He know when you need it. He know how you need it. And he know how to get it to you. Come on, give him a hand for you. I'm here just to encourage somebody. Sometimes it's a reminder to edify, to exhort, and uh, maybe even challenge somebody today. We're going to look at two different occasions today. 
And as we look at these occasions, the thought come to me. Hold on. Help is on the way. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, say, hold on. Help's on the way. Uh -uh, uh, say it say it like you mean it. Tell, tell them like you mean it. Look them in the eye and tell them, hold on. Help is on the way. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Mm -hmm. As we think about holding on, I also thought about keeping the faith. I heard pastors say, stay in the race, stay in the fight, stay in the fight. In order to stay in the fight, you got to keep the faith. These are two familiar passages of scripture. Uh, in the book of Daniel, the third chapter, we're going to talk about those three Hebrew boys. Y'all know their name? What's their name? All right, some of us heard it. Some of us know the story, Shack, Rack, Meshach, and Abednego. All right. And then in the New Testament, we're going to talk about old Jarius. Remember Jarius? We'll talk about him today. In these two passages today, we'll see the importance of holding on, keeping the faith. We'll see the importance of holding on to your beliefs. Then we'll look at the results and consequences of the ones that we're looking at of their faith. Come on, tell the Lord thank you. Somebody say, hold on. Help is on the way. Mm. In 1981, uh, this gospel group called Sensation Nightingales, they penned a song and it says to the saints, saints, hold on. Everything it's going to be all right. Y'all remember that song? Everything is going to be all right. Mm. Saints, hold on. Everything is going to be all right. Can you tell somebody that today? Can you tell them it's going to be all right? And really mean it? Could you tell them that help is on the way? And really mean it? Somebody might need some assurance. The one that you're sitting right next to might be your brother and sister that you think so strong. They are so strong in the Lord. But they might be the one that need a little assurance today. That if they hold on, it's going to be all right. Mm, come on, tell the Lord thank you. Thank you, Lord. As we read our Bible, it's so many examples of people holding on. There's so many examples of people keeping their faith. <laughs> and it's so many examples of God coming through. And it seems right at the right time he's coming through. Can I get a witness? Will he come through? Somebody know what I'm talking about. Okay, let's get in the word. Let's go to Daniel, the third chapter. And just for the sake of time, if y'all don't mind, it, it, I might skip through some verses, but uh, most of us know this story. Most of us know it, this passage. Uh, we start off in the first verse, O King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, he built a golden, golden image. And the Bible gave its height, and it says it was three score cubits high. And there was the breadth of six cubits. So that tells me that this golden image he built was about 90 feet tall. It's a big, tall image. Come on, tell him thank you. And about six cubits wide, it's almost nine or ten feet wide. So that's a big golden image. And as you go on down, if you keep reading... Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, he, he told the people that if, if they heard the cry, like on the fourth verse, he says, Oh, people, nations, and languages, that at the time which you hear the sound of the comet, flute, and harp, Sackhurst, Sobster, uh, he went on to say, when you hear that, 
if you don't fall down and worship, shall in that same hour, he says, be cast into a mist of a burning fiery furnace. Mm. And as we keep on reading those three Hebrew boys of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they spake unto the king. And they 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 had some people come and 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 make accusations of them because they didn't bow to that golden uh, image. And the king got mad and the king asked them, he said, now, you wouldn't bow, this is my words now, if, if, if you keep on reading, you'll, you'll see what I'm saying. You know, certain of the Jews, it says in verse 12 that they, uh, whom they had set over their affairs and probably some Babylon. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego they had favor with the king. But after the king made this golden image, he wanted them to do what he wanted them to do. Just like a lot of people that you're around today, a lot of people that you may know, they do something for you with an ulterior motive because I want you to do something for me. But this is the king. So whatever the king says, amen? But it's in the 12th verse, they said that there are certain Jews whom thou set over your affairs, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Say, these men, O king, they haven't regarded you. They don't serve your gods, nor do they worship the golden image which you set up. And the Bible said that Nebuchadnezzar got angry. Say, in his rage and fury, he commanded them to bring them to him. And Nebuchadnezzar spoke to him and said, Shack, Rack, Meshach, and Abednego, is this true? That I hear about you, is this true? Mm. And as it go on down, they talked to him and said, O oh, king, said, uh, this is not something that we want to take lightly as we answer you. We want to be careful how we answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fire furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hands, O king. But if not, be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve thy gods. Now worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Help me, Lord. The boys held on to their faith. Somebody say, hold on, three Hebrew boys. Help is on the way. It's on the way. Just hold on to your faith. Oh, in King Nebuchadnezzar, if you allow me to go on, he gets real mad. And now he says to heat that fiery furnace up seven more times than normal. And not only that, he asks for these captains of the guard to grab those Hebrew boys and bound them up, tie them up, and throw them in that furnace. The Bible says that the heat from the flames was so hot that when the men went to throw the Hebrew boys in, the flame burned them up. Come on, tell the Lord thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. And I like how the Hebrew boys just held on to their faith. Though they were bound and, and tied up and cast into a hot, seven times more hot of fiery furnace, the Bible says, hmm. It says that they, the, the, the king acts. They say, wait a minute. Can we throw three guys in here bound up? Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they answered and said unto him, true, O king. He answered and said unto them, but lo, I see four of them in there. 
And not only that, they are loose. Mm. And they walking around in the midst of the fire. And not only that, they have no hurt in them. Uh, I say in the form of the fourth one, it's like the son of God. Come on, tell him thank you. See, if you just hold on, help is on the way. Help is on the way. See, Jesus showed up in the fire. Took the fire, took the fire out of the flame. Come on, tell him thank you. And they went on to say it wasn't no smoke smell. It wasn't no scent. It wasn't nothing to those Hebrew boys. They, their hair wasn't scotch. Their clothes wasn't sc just Just Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus showed up in the fire for those three Hebrew boys. That's just one occasion. We're going to go over to the New Testament. I'm not trying to hold us long. We're going to go over to Mark to chapter 5. Yeah, we're going to talk about Jarius a little bit. Mark chapter 5, verses 21. You can also find this passage of Scripture in Matthew, the ninth chapter, and Luke, the eighth chapter. You can find this same passage of Scripture about Jarius. Jarius was a ruler in the church. He wasn't a church official whose 12-year-old daughter uh, was sick unto death. And when the story picks up, it says, when Jesus was passed over again by ship to the other side. Somebody say Jesus. Much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And we, when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Which tell me Jarius knew about Jesus. And not only did he fall at his feet and worship him, the Bible said that he besought him greatly, saying, my little daughter lied at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed. And that she may live. Could you just see the heart of Jarius? All of us as parents, we know when our kids get sick. I say when there's something going on with them. And then they get real sick. What a doctor say, uh, we undid all we could do. But when Jesus show up. If you just hang on in there. Your help is on the way. Come on, tell him thank you. And the Bible says in the 24th verse says that Jesus went with Jarius. And not only that, a lot of people followed him and thronged him. And I think I looked at this because now something's showing up like a shift. Jesus is on his way to Jarius' house to heal his sick daughter that's about to die. And all of a sudden, here comes a woman with an issue of blood. And this woman done spent all she had. Could, could, I, could I just tell it like this? Is that okay? She done spent all she had going to the doctors. How many know doctors are expensive? That medicine expensive. She had spent all she had, the Bible says. But her condition only got worse. But she heard about Jesus coming through. And she said within herself, if I could just but touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Where's your faith? If I could just but touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. So in this shift, I was thinking about Jarius because I want Jesus to come heal my daughter. 
I, I, I don't want them wasting, uh, taking time with somebody else right now. Right now, I, I want them to, but I thought about Jarius. Somebody say, Jarius, hold on. Your help is on the way. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. And as I think about this woman, she waited 12 years to get to Jesus. 12 years to touch the hem of his garment. 12 years to spend all she had. Come on, tell him thank you. And at the time of her 12 years is the same amount of years that Jerry's daughter has lived. Thank you, Lord. And as this woman's faith, see, when you got faith, let me tell you what faith is. Thank you, Lord. Faith is a complete trust. Faith is a complete confidence in someone or something. Faith is a strong belief in God. Faith is a strong belief in religion. But it's based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. Spiritual apprehension. Your understanding of who you got faith in. Come on, tell him thank you. So this woman heard of Jesus and all of these miracles and he's been performing and she said I know within myself if I, if I could just make it to him through this crowd and touch the hem of his garment that I'll be made whole huh. and while Jesus is there talking to the woman he told her daughter be of good cheer your faith has made you whole. I said your faith. Come on, tell him thank you. And while he was speaking with her, the Bible says that somebody came from Jairus' house and told him, hey, your daughter dead now. Don't even worry the master no more. Don't even worry him no more. She's gone. Jesus looked at Jairus. Remember he told him he was going to come heal his daughter? He said, don't be afraid. Just believe. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that if you believe and you have the faith in God, that you just hold on. Because your help is coming. That's what I'm saying. Your help is on the way. Come on, tell him thank you. And after he said your daughter is dead, Jesus said, don't fear could I put it in my words? Don't be scared. Just trust me. Believe in me. She's not dead, just sleeping. That's a word for somebody today. I say that's a word for somebody today. Don't be scared. Just trust him. Just trust him. See, God didn't give us the spirit of fear. I say God didn't give us the spirit of fear. But that's the enemy's job. And the enemy's going to be on his job. But as the, as the Bible go on in verse 38, he made it to Jairus' house, he says. Oh, he makes it over there to Jairus' house. And something's happening in that Jairus' house. Somebody say they're having a funeral. They're weeping and wailing. And if you keep on reading it, and the Bible says that Jesus did something there. He said he put them out. Sometimes you need to put yourself away from some things. You need to get away from some things. Oh, all of this disbelief, all of this looking at it the way it, it looked like it is with your eyes. We're talking about God. See, God takes the impossible and he makes it possible. 
<laughs> he takes the impossible and he makes it possible. Come on, tell him thank you. Even the things you see with your eyes that you think there's no other way for this to happen. I say God can make it possible. Come on, tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So at this funeral, the, uh, and it goes on in verse 41, the Bible says that Jesus takes the little girl by the hands. And he said something to her. It's important. Because if he don't say it to her, then he just says it all the day to get up. He told her to get up. Just like he told Lazarus. He said, Talitha Kuna? Maybe I didn't say that right. But he meant for her, made, wake up, arise. Come on, tell him thank you. If I had time today, I wanted to go into the examples of faith. That's in the 11th chapter of uh, Hebrews. Man, it's a lot of examples of faith. But I'm going to ask you at your leisure to go through some of that and look at it. Just some examples of faith and keeping your faith and holding on. And I know we're looking at these people. But the Bible was written for us. For our learning. But we can look at those examples of faith and know that God will do some of the things for us because they held on and some of them didn't even see the promises that God had made to them. But they happened. But I heard the word say that he has something better for us. If we read the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews, the first verse, it says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Uh, the evidence of things not seen. And I told y'all what faith was by Webster's definition. The complete trust and confidence in something or someone. But I like the Bible's definition of faith. The substance of things hoped for. The important and essential, essential things. Let me say that again. The important and essential things that you hope for. The evidence of things you can't see. Uh, we talk about hope. For the Bible says in Romans 8 and 24, it says that we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen, it's not really hope. For what a man can see it, why does he yet hope for it? Come on, tell him thank you. So it's these unseen things. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things that you see uh -huh, were not made of things which do appear. All right, let me say that again. Through faith, we understand that the whole worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. So it wasn't made of the things that you could see with your eyes. Come on, tell him thank you. But it was made by the word of God. Because God just spoke. And it is. What are you saying, preacher? All God has to do is just speak the word to your situation. To your condition. To whatever is going on. God speak the word. And it changes. Thank you, Lord. And it went on down and talked about these different uh, Faith examples. And, and, and I, like I said, just for, for, the, for the sake of time. 
we're not going to go through it. But if you can, just read it at your own leisure. But I do have a few questions. Personal questions. And the personal questions, they came to me first. First question, has God ever let you down? I want you to answer that. He ever let you down? Hebrews 13 and 5, God said, I will never leave or forsake you. The second question. Has God ever left you alone? These are the kind of questions they thought provoking because a lot of times the enemy come to us and he try to get us. He try to steal, kill and destroy. Amen. But has God ever left you alone? Matthew 28 and 20, Jesus said, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. No matter what you're going through. I thought about those footprints in the sand, the little footprints in the sand. And the troubled times in a man's life, he see one set of footprints. And he, he kind of worried him and he asked the Lord, why in my hardest times in my life, I just see one set of footprints in the sand. And the Lord told him. That was the time that I lifted you up and picked you up and I carried you. Come on, tell him thank you. Has there ever been a time when God didn't show up or rescue you on time? Oh, it's some good personal questions because they came to me first and I thought about it. I thought about a time when I came real close to death and I was out there doing something I shouldn't have been doing it and I almost... Elder, it almost was a drug deal gone bad. Yeah. And I got to a point to where I just could see the end of my life. Yeah. Come on, tell him thank you. But God stepped in yeah. right on time. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, the Bible says in his Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, it says... To everything, there's a season. And not only that, it says, and a time for every purpose under the heaven. Didn't God show up on time? See, the enemy been trying to kill you. He been trying to steal and destroy. That's what his purpose is. Is there anybody here that can say, that God took those evil plots and those evil ideals and those negative thoughts that the enemy had for me and he took them and he turned it around for good. Come on, tell him thank you. I said he turned it around for my good. Oh yes, the Bible tells us that all, and we know that all things work together for the good. For them that love God and are called according to to his purpose. Come on, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, saints, hold on. <laughs> hold on, because our help is on the way. <laughs> right now, I'm talking about right now, our help is here. Jesus, he's right here. Right now. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you. I better get on. As I thought about this, and I'm going to bring it home now. Guys, and I heard Pastor talk about this a little today in his message. We got to hang in there. I said, we got to hang in there. We got to hold on to our faith. Come on, tell him thank you. See, right now, this world is mixed up. I say this, this world is mixed up right now. We got to hang in there, sister, for our next generation. Brother, we got to hang in there for our next two generations. Uh, somebody we might need to hang in for three generations. But we got to hang on in there. Thank you, Lord. 
We can't deter from the command that God gave us to go. We can't. It's too important now. I said it's too important right now. When we look at our society, when we look at our communities, come on, tell them thank you. What they doing to the young? What they doing? If they ain't locking them up, they killing them. Come on, tell them thank you. Well, what the church doing? Where is the church? Where is God's people? Where is the men of God? Come on, tell them thank you. We can't deviate from our command to go. Thank you, Lord. See, right now, this world is getting more knowledgeable than ever. But the world is also getting more wicked. Come on, tell him thank you. Tell the Lord thank you. Society is getting more and more wickeder. Right now, the church, religion, and Christianity is taking some negative hits. Come on, tell him thank you. I say they're taking some negative hits. However, we got to stand up for God. We got to stand up for his laws. We got to stand up for his statutes. Tell him yes. The Bible said he made male and female. Tell the Lord yes. Thank you, Lord. See, we got to be tried through the fire. I say we got to be tried through the fire. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, 1 and 2, says after. Looking at all these faith examples. Say, let us lay aside the weights and the sins that so easily beset us. So easily hinders or enshave, enshares us, ensnares us. I'm sorry. Let me get my words together. Lay aside those weights. And those sins that easily beset us. Beset us mean hinder us or ensnare us. And let us run the way, this race. Looking to Jesus as the author and finisher of our faith. Thank you, Lord. I will submit today that we have to be purged. We got to get all this bad stuff out of us. Tell the Lord yes. And God is the only one that can do it for us. See, we got some bad particles in us. Some of us got bad chemicals in us. Some of us got bad habits, bad thoughts, and bad formulas. Any way you look at it, it has to be burned away. Thank you, Lord. In order for gold to be pure gold, it's got to be heated up and put in a fire. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Burn away. So the Lord says that God will purge us. Oh, Lord, some of us need to be purged today. Purge us, Lord, so that we can be the children that you called us to be, so that we can be the examples, Lord, that they can look at, oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Some of us, Lord, we want to do it, but we don't know for whatever reason. We're not doing it. We're not doing what God called us to do. God, help us right now. God, we need your help. God, I want to be the one you can call on, the one that you can depend on. Help me right now. Help me to hold on. Help me to hold on for my change to come. Help me now. Help me right now, Lord. Oh, Jesus. If I had time, I would have went. I would have went. I would have went. But for, for the sake of, of, of time, let's stand and let us pray. I will submit that we all, we all, I said, can do better. If we hold on. If we hold on to our change come, if we stay in the race, if we stay in the fight, God will equip us. God will give us what we need. 
Lord, we ask you right now. God, as we stand, God, you gave us the word to hold on and our help is on the way. God, we trust in you now. We have complete confidence in you right now that you're going to do what you said. Be on the winning side because we know that all things work together for good. God, help us now. Lord, as I reflect and I examine myself, I look at the areas where I need to come up. God, I acknowledge that I haven't been doing what you asked me to do. I acknowledge that I've been doing it in my own strength. I acknowledge that I've been doing this long enough myself. Some of us have been in positions and been in places where we want to give up, where we want to throw in the towel. God, we've been praying and seeking you, some of us. And it seems like we haven't got anywhere. Seems like we're just spinning our wheels. Father, help us. Help us. Right now, help us. You told us, told us if we call on you, you'll answer. If we seek for you, we'll find you. If we ask, it'll be given to us. We ask you now to come into our hearts and make the difference in our lives. You say, knock and it shall be open. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear me, open up the heart and allow me to come in. And me and my father will come and sup with you. Come sup with me now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Thank you for accepting this. Thank you for healing you. Thank you for strengthening you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I can do all things. Come on, tell him. Say, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you.